everybody. Uh, my name is TJ Clark. So the company I ended up reviewing was Bungie for their analysis. Um, we'll go through the history here and then talk about the different analysis, uh, whether it was a good buy or a sell compared to today's stock price. Um, so history on Bungie, they are a uh, agriculture company that started out in 1818 by Johan Bungie. Um, it started out as a trading company in Amsterdam. Um, it moved into Brazil in 1905 and then moved into North America in 1918. Um, it's continued to expand its footprint and today it's in 40 countries with approximately 32,000 employees. Uh, the company's main focus continues to be on agriculture um, and it breaks itself up into these five segments here. So we've got egg business, edible oil, which is like vegetable oil, uh, milling products, so like uh, corn milling and flour, sugar and bioenergy, uh, and fertilizer. Uh, they're one of the few companies uh, across the globe that has an infrastructure and supply chain that reaches and takes commodities from farm to end users. Um, in their operating model, it's uh, really based on high volume. Um, the industry in general has a low profit margin. Uh, so when you compare this to a retail environment or something similar to that, it's significantly lower profit um, than you'll see in those areas. So this company, like many others, has shifted their focus and their operating model from um, a regional, local model to more of a commercial focus. So there are three commercial activities that they focus on are processing of agriculture commodities, managing physical product flow, and their risk management. So looking at the company, the, the company's three big competitors um, are Cargill, which is the company that I work for, ADM, which is Archer Daniel Midland, and Louis Dreyfus. Um, however, Cargill and Louis Dreyfus are both privately held companies. Um, so for the industry comparisons, I switched it up and used the Andersons and Green Plains, which are two US-based companies in the agriculture industry. Um, however, when looking through the comparables, it, it's a, there's a pretty noticeable difference between uh, ADM and Bungie compared to the Andersons and Green Plains. Um, so, as going through all of this here, um, you know, when you look at the Anderson and Green Plains, the big difference was due to their stock price. Uh, ADM and Bungie were over $40 per share, where the Andersons and Green Plains were under 15. They also had significantly less shares outstanding than the larger companies, uh, which led to their price per book value to be very different from, from, than ADM and Bungie. Uh, ADM and Bungie had respective values of 1.22 and 1.07, uh, while the Anderson and Green Plains were 476 and 509.17. Um, the average of those three competitors ended up with a price per book value of one uh, nine four five six seven seven million, which significantly distorted the end result considering the price per share value was uh, 8,236 8, million. Uh, and price per earnings was negative 27.58 million. Um, and that was due to their net income loss for the year. And when I say them, I'm talking about Bungie had a net income loss last year, which um, kind of threw out some of the numbers as we go through the different comparisons. So overall, the comparable market value calculated out to 642.108 million, while the market value of Bungie was only 6.301 million, or 6,301 million. Um, by these numbers, the company is significantly undervalued and would be a great buy. Um, however, as we go through some of these next slides and next analysis, it, it comes out a little bit different. So going through the forecasted analysis, um, when looking at out the next five years, I use a consistent growth rate of 3% um, and a discount rate of 9, which would really be the minimum amount expected for a return on investment. Uh, I went with a slightly lower growth rate uh, due to compared to some of the examples due to the company's year-over-year -year results uh, over the past few years. Uh, the company had a negative growth in operating income and operating assets over the past four years in a row. Um, in 2019, Bungie, Bungie ended up with a negative 808 million in cash from operations. Um, fortunately, they ended up with a positive uh, 1,000, 
$503 million in cash from investing activities, which resulted in a $695 million of free cash flow for the analysis. Uh, after calculating out the expected future free cash flows and bringing it back to the present value, it showed the firm's value is uh, $11,803 million. Uh, they had a $6,595 million in outstanding debt, bringing the value to uh, share value to shareholders down to $5,248 million. Uh, there are currently 142.15 million shares outstanding, which places the projected share price at $36.92. Uh, $36 uh, the current share price, as of running this report, was $44.33. Um, so that would indicate that the share price is overvalued and should be a sell. Uh, the amount of speculation in this analysis is fairly high. Uh, it's at 75.16% of the firm's value being made up the, of the present value of, uh, of the continuing value. So looking at the forecasted numbers, uh, not surprising with the negative CFO that uh, this came out with a lower projected share price, uh, which is kind of a continuing theme as we go through some of these slides. Next, looking at the residual earnings model. Um, it, with this particular review, it wasn't very efficient because of the negative earnings. Uh, they reported an overall net loss of uh, $1,291 million, which throws off the model. Um, I did calculate it out using the most re recent numbers and ended up with a negative $136 uh, forecasted value, which obviously that's not super helpful. Um, so, in order to try and get something useful, I pulled up the 2018 data and used that and forecasted that out for the next five years to, to see if I could come up with something to compare it. I used the same expected growth rate of 3% and expected return of 9. Um, I was able to pull the data I needed off the, the 10K for the most part. Um, and then I used a stock price from July 21st of 2019 to uh, do somewhat of an apples to apples comparison. The number of shares outstanding in 2018 was 141.7 million with uh, 313 million of dividends paid out. Um, despite knowing that some of these numbers, you know, dividends and uh, outstanding shares changed a little bit, I left the numbers the same over the five year comparison just for the sake of the model here. They weren't significantly different uh, either way, so it, it didn't have a, a big impact. Um, so the results of this model forecasted the value of the share price out to be $8.58. Uh, the stock price at the time of, of July of 19 was uh, $56.93. So the reason behind the price being so drastically different is the relatively low amount of earnings that year compared to the book value. Uh, earnings were $287 million, but the book value was $8,067 million. This created a negative return on earnings when expecting a return of 9%. Uh, having a negative return on earnings also meant that there was a negative present value on a return on earnings. Uh, this meant I could not calculate the percent of speculation that was included in these calculations. So overall, another pretty significantly uh, low number. Going through and reformulating the income uh, had a big impact. Uh, so looking at the residual earnings reformulated analysis here, um, while the operating income from sales was still negative, there was a $1,359 million foreign exchange credit that was part of other comp income that resulted in a total operating income of a positive $269 million. Uh, there was also a slight change in book value down from $5,913 to $5,800. Uh, however, using the same 3% growth rate and 9% return resulted in another negative amount in residual operating income each of the five years forecasted. So this led to a negative present value of residual operating income and a lower value for future assets um, than the current value. So once the debt was subtracted and divided by current shares, the value came out to $18.28. Uh, again, the current stock price when running this report was $44.33. Uh, this would make the look like the stock should be sold. Uh, one item worth noting is that the agriculture business tend to have a high amount of assets uh, to income due to low operating margins and high amount of inventory, uh, specifically in grain, and then the physical assets needed uh, to store that grain. 
So that makes this particular model pretty difficult to use um, and probably any year. Uh, so one of the main advantages of reforming the income and liability is that it made their residual earnings model more usable. Um, it brought earnings back to a positive side, which allowed the rest of the calculations to process. Um, however, I still ran into the issue I did using the 2018 data. Since earnings were so low compared to the book value, the return on earnings ended up negative again. Um, using the reformulated numbers, the model forecasted the value at 16.18 per share. You know, far below the 44.13 price. Uh, with this one, again, I couldn't accurately calculate this speculation in the numbers since the return on earnings was negative. So then the, decide, the decision to buy or sell, um, there's a number of factors that you know, consider when looking at this. Uh, the first would be these calculations and the numbers behind them. Um, one interesting thing when digging into the numbers is that the reason the company had such a negative net income was that they had a major loss in their sugar business. Um, they had a one, uh, $1,623 million loss in 2019. Um, that was almost entirely due to charges associated with the contribution of their uh, sugar operations in a newly formed joint venture in December of 2019. Uh, that's a pretty significant loss that could be considered a one-time event and should be taken into account when doing you know, this type of evaluation. However, even when I went through and if I uh, removed that expense, that net income would still have only been about $332 million. When using that number in the standard residual earnings model, uh, it still left uh, values that were negative. Um, the only way that it really had a major impact was if I added that loss directly back into the income on the reformulated income model. But then it shows a value of four times the current stock price. Um, and that just seems like too much of a, of a manipulation to have any value in helping make a decision. Um, looking at different models, they generally show that the stock is overvalued and should be sold. Um, another major impact with the stock price in this particular industry is just international trade. Uh, China is the largest importer of grain in the world, and their position on trade has a direct impact on agriculture stock prices across the board. Bungie is in a slightly better position than other agriculture companies that uh, they're less dependent on exporting out of U.S. specifically since they have operations in other parts of the world, most notably in South America, that they can export from. Um, having said that, with just the uncertainty uh, in international trade and the factors in these forecast models, I would say Bungie is a stock that should be sold and is currently overpriced on the market. Um, so I look forward to hearing any questions and feedback anybody has. Um, get this posted up right now. Everybody have a good day.